Hello, my name is Alan. My pronouns are he, him. Uh, and I am uh, running today, facilitating today, the, I think, fifth. I'm beginning to lose track. Um, but I think it's the fifth session of our run of the between. Uh, this is uh, a PBA, PBTA game of gothic horror in uh, mid-Victorian London. We're pitching this at about 1870, uh, for those of you with an eye to historical detail. <laughs> um, uh, this is a game by Jason Cordova. It, it is uh, recently published and I would recommend you all work by it. Uh, this game has been organized as part of the Gauntlet RPG community's monthly calendar. Uh, if you want to find out more about the Gauntlet, please search Gauntlet-RPG uh, on Google or some other reputable search engine and you will find it. Uh, and come join us, come play with us, because uh, we think it's great. Uh, and we would encourage more people to play online. Uh, so that's the spin. Now, um, I will just, because we've got a new player joining us today, I will just uh, refresh um, where we are in terms of safety tools. Uh, we are playing with uh, the X card. Uh, so the X card is there to stop play if anyone gets discomforted in a bad way. As I often say at this point, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that you'll be discomforted in a good way because it's that kind of game. But if you, the best way to play the X card is to show it to me or type it into the chat. I sometimes don't check the chat as often as I should. So if any other player spots an X card in the chat, please draw my attention to it. Um, we are playing with lines and veils uh, and there is a, a safety tab in the, uh, in the character keeper that shows that we have lines. These are things that won't crop up in the, uh, in the fiction. We have line, lines on bullying, disease, homoph homophobia and transphobia, uh, pandemic and plague, um, racism, sexual assault and sexual violence, and slavery. Uh, we also have some veils. Veils could crop up in the fiction, but we will draw a discrete veil across them uh, when they do. And uh, we currently have veils on harm to children, harms to pet domestic or pets or domestic animals, uh, mind control, sexism, sexual content, suicide and torture. Uh, there are some where we've got ask first. I'll be honest, I tend to avoid the ask first. Um, so it may be a question of, of you asking me if you want it back in. But we have ask first on eye injuries, graphic injuries and gore. Uh, uh, we, I, you know, so far we've steered as a decent line on that if we can. Uh, it was pretty gory last time. Uh, I, I, I'm going I'm, I'm to veil any mind control. I'm sorry, ask first. I will ask about mind control, though I'm not imagining a lot. Uh, and I will ask about suicide too. Um, there is interest in body horror uh, and there is interest in, in classism because we are playing in a class ridden Victoria, Lon Victorian London uh, and, and that's had some interesting uh, outcomes. Um, so those are the safety tools we're playing with uh, in terms of lines and veils. We're also playing with the Gauntlet Code of Conduct, uh, which, you know, I think we're all reasonably experienced gauntleteers now. So, so you know, I summarise the Gauntlet Code of Contact to still be a dick, uh, and, and no one ever is. But we're also playing with the open door. That means that if something happens in the real world, uh, you know, go deal with it. Don't, don't feel chained to the table. Also, don't feel chained to the table if this turns out not to be the game you thought it was going to be. You know, none of us want to sit around playing games that we're not enjoying. So if this is not the game for you, please don't feel obliged to stay. If you do go away just to take a breath of air or to take a stretch or whatever else, uh, if you can just put in the chat that uh, that you're planning to come back, that's really helpful. We'll play on and we'll we'll reintegrate that player when that character when uh, when the opportunity arises. So uh, that's a rather longer spiel uh, than than uh, I'd intended. So apologies for that. Let me get on to our characters and the players. So uh, Blake, uh, say hello, tell us your pronouns, and introduce us to Razor Rose Roberts, the American. G'day, I'm Blake he, him. I'm playing uh, Razor Rose Roberts, the American, so I'm sort of the investigator troubleshooter of the group, though we're all investigators, really. Um, yeah, she's got a sort of darker, feral nature, which hasn't let out yet, but we're getting there. <laughs> and yeah, a bit of a fish out of water, new in London, but everything's been really nice so far, so I'm sure it'll be fine. And I think we left you last time investigating the area around Hargrave House 
after uh, Annie Morrish, uh, our previous vessel character, returned uh, to a bloody end involving blood, guts, uh, a tongue, and rats. Um, moving along, Leandro, say hello, tell us your pronouns, and introduce us to our factotum, Chambers. Yes. Hello, hi, my name is Leandro, I use he, him pronouns. Um, I'm putting Chambers, she uses she, her pronouns. Um, she's the factotum, which means she is a servant, um, a gopher, a directly employed um, by one of the other characters, and we'll meet next. Um, whoever they were in the past, well, we've been learning bits of it uh, every now and then, thanks to the mask of the past, but that doesn't matter because um, all that matters now is the person she serves, um, which is um, the character we'll meet next. Oh, with Hargrave House, I guess she also kind of serves that place. Um, she is quiet, um, speaks low, um, quite mysterious, very capable. Um, a couple of sessions ago, she punched a man to death um, to protect her employer. Um, who was bumbling about London as is his want. Um, and she has like, yeah, a bit of a checkered life before um, becoming a servant. She's got a bunch of contacts, her informals. Um, we found out from certain flashbacks that um, she might've worked in a more criminal um, part of, of the world in London. Um, definitely burnt down a house um and made off big with that apparently um but other than that she is like um she's she's just you know terribly terribly competent i guess dangerous eyes. i think it's fair to say um yes uh and and then so moving along then to a full mentioned toff at large um dr victor vice david say hello tell us your pronouns and introduce us to our mother dr vice yeah, uh, hi, my name is David. I use he, him pronouns. Um, and I am playing uh, Dr. Victor Weiss, who, yes, is in the mother playbook. Um, this playbook basically means that um, he's in that classic uh, Victor Frankenstein trying to uh, animate the dead uh, mode of being. Um, we have, in fact, learned a little uh, about um, uh, Victor's uh, project, um, a uh, uh, a young man who he spent much time with, um, a former lover, former friend um, called Kit, um, who was a member of the aristocracy. Um, but in in his day to day life, when when not uh, attempting to uh, uh, reverse the uh, the ice hand of death, um, Doctor Vice um, is a uh, is a, a trained um, uh, medical uh, medical doctor with an interest in the new field of alienism. Uh, and studying the human mind. Um, he uh, has, has been at Hargrave House for um, some time now, a few, a few years, um, and um, is, um, yeah, has, uh, you know, does, does all the, the uh, tinkering about with um, uh, bodies, both living and dead, that you would expect from, from someone in his position. Um, he has a neat moustache and a, a little goatee beard, um, small uh wireframe glasses piercing blue eyes behind them uh dresses dresses smartly um uh almost constantly smoking um and yeah last time we saw um dr vice um he was um well performing the last rites isn't quite the right turn of phrase but he administered over the last moments of uh, annie morrish um uh, and then uh, carried on to the whitechapel morgue to uh, investigate a faceless corpse um, uh, left by the um, uh, possibly mythical Sally No Face. Um, what can I tell you? Um, officiated over sewing up Annie Morris's remains, but managing to collect her heart at the same time. Um, I've just an aside, Victor. I do seem to remember. Didn't you? collect some hands last time because Rose returned to Hargrave House with a case of mismatched hands. Oh yes indeed that is correct I must have uh yep I had not marked that on. I, I'm sure if you find a pair a matched pair things will be better but um right now they, they are you do have them. 
Um, so this brings us to our, our, our fourth player, a uh, new player joining us today and their character. So Darren, say hello, tell us your pronouns and introduce us to Ephraim Parker, the vessel. Hello, uh, I'm Darren, he, him. Uh, today I'll be playing Ephraim Parker, also he, him. Um, Ephraim is uh, of the working class, but uh, has a decent amount of money due to uh, doing various things like uh, finding lost objects, lost people, uh, and, uh, you know, doing uh, some divination, both uh, real and uh, theatrical. Um, and uh, sort of inspired by David Bowie, uh, I chose the trait mismatched eyes. And uh, he has brown disheveled hair of medium length and dresses reasonably well, um, often wears gray a lot uh, and prefers morning coats. Uh, a thoroughgoing gentleman, I'm certain. Um, and uh, let's, let me just have a look down, this, down here. So um, uh, let me just refer you to the Dawn question, Darren. Uh, the Dawn questions on roll 26, 27, so on. Um, uh, have you selected the two uh, that you want to have in play for this cycle of, of day night? Oh, it looks like I missed something. Let's see the dawn question. Uh, the first three are the same for everyone, but then each playbook has a different selection ah. for two more. So I just want to check in and make sure you've had a check. You, you have those aren't just accidentally left over. Uh, they were accidentally left open. Uh, oops. Okay. Start problem. Uh, so I should check two of these. Yeah, the, there are only two of them that have drop down boxes. So if you hit the drop down beside the fourth and fifth que questions, you will find a range of things uh, to aim for in inverted commas in play to earn XP. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so I've chosen, um, did you counsel someone using your supernatural affinities as the basis for that advice? And did you have a face-to-face -face encounter with a dark entity? Fine, well, we look forward to you angling in that direction. Um, and then just going down, rites of salt and smoke. Um, now you've chosen, uh, when, when you use this, uh, you need to um, make an offering to the entities. Now, you've chosen, I, I think this is your own, sacrifice a beloved memory. Now, one of the conceits of the game is that memories are only revealed when a mechanic tells you to. So uh, that's going to be quite tricky to run in practice um, because you'll see that uh, if you go up to the mask of the past, about two sections above, up there in the mid 40s, um, we know nothing about Ephraim when he arrives, but by marking the mask of the past, you will tell us things. If you use, if you cite a beloved memory when you use that move, then you'll break that mechanic. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. Sorry about that. I uh, all right. have not played Brindlewood Bay. And I admit I'm a little bit foggy on how it works, even after uh, doing some looking. Um, Don't so worry about that. Don't worry about that. Let's see here. Let me uh, change that. Okay. Um, I was a little leery of choosing a perversion of Christian rituals just because I didn't know who I was playing with, but is that acceptable? Um, I, thumbs up for me. I love a good Christian ritual being perverted. Uh, let's see. Oh, come on, Zoom. Zoom is now not letting. Okay. Why can't I see people? Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, I don't know. Our cameras are on. Huh. Can you hear us? 
Oh, I can definitely hear you. I don't know what I did to my view. Oh, there we go. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, thumbs up from everybody. Yep. Okay, sounds good. I will change it to that then. Fine. Um, that's your starting move, so to speak. And I notice you've chosen a beacon in the dark when you walk the streets of London at night. Stuff happens. Dark stuff happens. Um, so uh, looking forward to seeing that uh, when we get to dark. Um, uh, so Ephraim, let's let, because um, just to remind myself, Dr. Weiss is at the Whitechapel Mortuary. Chambers, you're also in Whitechapel, I think, but not with Dr. Weiss. Am I right? Uh, yes, I went straight to the murder victim's house or wherever they're staying. Fine. Um, so, Rose, that leaves you in the vicinity of Hargrave House. So I'm going to place you in Hargrave House um, to answer the door, because in the absence of Chambers, um, you know, I'm sure Dr. Weiss would ignore it in the absence of, of the servant, but you're an American, so you're you, you're very happy to answer the door when any, whenever somebody knocks. Yeah. Um, and there is Ephraim Parker. Um, uh, and Ephraim, you, you have been sent some telegrams by an old acquaintance of yours, Annie Morrish, um, and uh, you have a letter of introduction or a telegram of introduction from her, which will get you across the threshold at Hargrave House. Um, and Rose, what question might you have for Ephraim Parker when it becomes clear that uh, he's an old acquaintance of, or, or he, he knew Annie Morrish? We'll worry about the, the details later. Yeah, I'll, well, yeah, I'll just say, how did you know Annie? Uh, we were sort of, uh, uh, we had like a professional relationship. Um, you know, uh, we we consulted each other on on certain uh, cases, and um, tried to not step on each other's toes in terms of clients, etc. Okay, so do you use tarot or crystal balls and things, or um, yeah, definitely uh, use of tarot, and I was also thinking of. Uh, psychometry might be part of his um supernatural abilities and sort of how he um how his uh uh move in the dark works where uh he can sort of find people and draw them to him okay. so uh, i'm guessing the telegram includes a letter saying something like extend every courtesy to well um, okay so I'll, and, in that and case invite him in at that very moment, Rose, um, uh, a boy arrives with a telegram addressed to you. To me? Uh. Yes. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, well, I'll sort of read this and usher Ephraim in and say, you know, come in this way. There's a room down the hall. Um, you can put your stuff in. Um, um, and this telegram is from Annie Morrish. And it says, what? Rose... If you are reading this, then I am no longer with you. Well, that's a bit of a slap in the face because it's only just happened. So <laughs> I'm a strange bit sort of, but uh... true. Um, uh, I have asked an acquaintance of mine, Ephraim Parker, to come to London to help you. You must understand how dangerous the coven is. Annie. Hmm. Um, yeah, she's kind of looking around, a little bit unsure what to think. Um, probably a few tears because it, it's it's been a day, you know. <laughs> oh, no, it's been less than a day. It's been a matter of hours. No, I mean it's been a rough day. Oh, wait, I see. But yes, yeah. that too. Um, okay, so yeah, yeah, I'll show show you from you know there's a room down the hall you can put your things in and say. I have some, I mean, you're not going to stay here and, and he asks us to show you every courtesy, but I, I have some very bad news. Um, did Annie mention anything about a group known as the Coven or the Fellowship to you? 
can I suggest that this is the perfect segue to the love letter, um, which reads something like, uh, Ephraim, when you arrive at Hargrave House, um, roll the day move to determine how many, uh, using reason, to work out how many rolls on the information move you get. So if I refer you, uh, Ephraim, to the moves reference tab, you will see top left, there is a thing called day move. When you do something risky or face something, or, or face something you fear, name what you're afraid will happen if you fail or lose your nerve. What are you afraid of if you don't stop the coven, Ephraim? Um, well, uh, certainly my own death and um, the deaths of innocent people and also just uh, getting no sense of justice due to uh, what they did to my friend. Quite, quite. So um, there is a dice room. You will find it on the info tab uh, about row 20. It's a roll with me dice room. So if you want to open that dice room, Darren, uh, thanks, uh, Blake, uh, and uh, roll 2d6 plus whatever your um, reason is. Oh, okay, that's a one. Hang on one second here. Let's see. So this is in the character keeper? Yeah, if you have a look on the info tab, it's a heck of a character keeper, this. Uh, so, you know, uh, take your time getting around it. Uh, if you go to the info tab, down around row 20. Ah, I see it. Yeah. So with any luck in a following win, that will open the dice room. And you should see that there are already some dice down there. Uh, I can't remember, frankly, who's a who's. So feel free to add a couple of dice in a color of your choice. Oh, okay. It's been uh, it's been a few months since I've used this one. Hang on one second. Sorry. There you go. Uh, how do I how do I change the color? Um, can you see there's a, a purple square in uh, at the end of the row of dice? Oh. If you go in there and uh, pick just about any color in the rainbow, I think. Uh, and oh, then hit yep. the six-sided dice twice, and that should create two six-sided dice in the color of your choice. There we go. Um, so they that are is random a... when they arrive. So nine plus one is ten. Yep. So I'm going to give you two rolls, two information move rolls, to interpret. Now, Annie was a, a, an odd, odd fish. Um, and so you are trying to interpret Annie's, um, the clues that she thinks she sent you. So I'm going to give you, again, if you go to the moves and reference tab, you'll find the third move down on the left hand side, the information move. When you search for a clue, conduct research or otherwise gather information, you are doing this by reading her telegrams. Um, I think this again is probably, well, you tell me, is this role with reason or is it a uh, role with sensitivity? Are you using your connection to Annie to work out what she was meaning? Um, yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, and definitely like uh, touching the telegram and um, getting images of uh, anyone who touched it or the person who sent who uh, sent it for, et cetera. Fine. Now, all I need to do is to find my coven sheet. I've got so many sheets in this game. <laughs> so 2d6 uh, plus, okay. uh, plus two for sensitivity uh, on the information move. Oh, uh, 12. Oh, well, that will do as a kickoff. Um, so let me see what 
shall I give you as a coven clue? We have some already, um, but when you touch the, the telegrams, you get a rubbery smell. So um, I'm gonna add a clue to the threats tab for the coven that says a rubbery smell in an unusual place. I can't spell, but there you go. That's... Yeah, um, so you get that sense from it. I mean, most of what's written there seems to be gibberish, but you get that sensation of her smelling that rubbery smell in an unusual place. Um, and, and the way this works, Darren, just mechanically, is that the clues are meant to be as, as open and frankly as vague as possible, so that when you lot come together to try to make sense of them, uh, they fit in all kinds of different ways. So they are deliberately vague. Let's have you roll uh, 2d6 plus two again to see what else you can discern. Oh, geez. Uh, 13 this time. Well, this is got, getting, you're going to be very welcome, uh, Hargrave House, I think. Um, uh, so I am going to, yeah, I'm going to stay with the smells, I think. I think I'm establishing a sense here of, of what's going on. I'm going to give you a strong smell of fish in an unusual place. But the joy of those 12s is that as well as getting those clues about the coven, you are also getting um, something else coming through. Um, and this relates to our mastermind, uh, Mrs. Braithwaite. Uh, let's see, what have we got? In oh, we've already got the one so far, I think. So, um, I will tell you that you it's as though you're looking through Annie's eyes as she looks down at a, at a note and, and you can look past the note in her hands to see that she is in the hall of Hargrave House. And it's a note that a T. Braithwaite, let me add that over on the far left hand side, um, a T. Braithwaite called while you were out. Um, and the other clue I'm going to give you as you connect to these uh, is that, what can I give you? Oh yes, this looks interesting. Um, you can see again Annie looking down at a piece of paper and it's an order or a delivery note of some description. Um, and the clue says uh, it is evidence that Braithwaite Hall has recently acquired an enormous amount of, would you prefer it to be dynamite, guns, opium, gold, or something of your choice? Huh. Yeah, that is interesting. Um, you know, I'm going to sound really American and choose guns. <laughs> I, I think in 1870, it was quite the Wild West in the East End of London, so don't worry. Um, so Braithwell has received a, an enormous amount, enormous amount, enormous number of guns, exclamation mark. Okay, well, you have tripled the number of, uh, of, um, of mastermind clues in no time flat. Um, I'm gonna go around now and see what other people are doing and then we'll do personal quarters. So Dr. Weiss, let me cut to you at uh, the mortuary where I think you were, you had had a conversation or seen off uh, the mortuary worker, Peter Jack Jacobson. Uh, what do you want to do after 
because you did examine the body, as I remember, of Clara. Yes, that's right. Um, yeah, um, I think. I think actually following the examination of the body. Um, uh, the. Um, I think I'm going to go and have a word with um, uh, Jacobson. Um, um, yeah, primarily to see if if the if there have been any bodies discovered in a similar uh, manner. Um, that's an interesting question. Uh, what do we know already? I think that he will con he will connect you back to. I think it's I think it's written in the threat on the threats tab. Um, Washington and Clara Yarbrough. Da, 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 da. This is the third such crime in a month. The other two victims, Edward Clive and Dolly Merriweather, also lived in Whitechapel. People are already saying it's old Sally No Face. Yes. Um, so yeah. In which case, yeah, I will ask. Um, did you uh, did you examine the other bodies? Um, uh, uh, yes, sir. I did, sir. Uh, obviously, no, not with the alacrity and the skill that you would bring to it, but uh, but I did the best I could. Obviously. Can you tell me um, uh, what you thought about the? What what you noticed about the bodies? Anything anything unusual out of the ordinary, other than well, no, not other than the uh, method of death, including the method of death. Uh, well, so they they they'd all had their faces removed. Indeed, um, and I would go to say, sir, that that it was in a grisly fashion, which is really just reinforcing your view of the body in front of you. Um, this sounds like you're angling towards the information move. Yeah, that, is that this, sounds um, good. Is this your charm at work or something it, else? It, it probably is, yeah, so, such as such as it is. Yeah, um, I, I'm going to let you roll with advantage because Peter Jacobson is in awe of you. It's clear from all his, his, uh, his reaction to you uh, that he is ever so humble in the presence of a real doctor of such skill, sir. Um, and that is a 10. Okay, so on a 10, I will give you something he noticed. Hmm. Let me think. Um, it wasn't so much in the body, sir, as in the clothes when I removed them. Um, I discovered a gold embossed card inviting the holder to an extraordinary new exhibit of art and medicine uh, but sadly there was no date uh, and, and and no address i see that certainly is a useful uh, piece of information thank you jacobson that i certainly have not been um I certainly have not heard of any such exhibits in the city, um, and that would imply that it is a rather select event. Strange that some poor fool in Whitechapel uh, was uh, was had been uh, had received an invitation or. I suppose found it somewhere. Well, as I say, sir, it's why I remember it. Mm. It struck me at the time a very unusual. Oh, thank you, Jacobson. You've done uh, done very well. Oh, um, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Let's cut to Chambers. Chambers. Now, Clara Yarbrough is an old friend, acquaintance, uh, confidant, edging um. to. Romantic interest, I, I almost said. Oh, it's not edging into it. Um, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> it absolutely was not. Uh, so she is the girl you left in Whitechapel when you went up in the world. 
Yeah, and I did kind of intimate that she was probably coming along, but evidently she didn't since, well, she stayed a washerwoman and I live in a big house. Indeed. Um, and uh, she lives in a tenement block, which is to say, uh, you know, not, not unlike these multi-story uh, terraces behind me, but with multiple occupancy. So most people live in one room. And it was in the hall of this tenement that her body was found a day or so ago. Uh, and so what do we see you doing, Chambers? Um, yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to go straight for her flat. Um, I've got an idea where it is. And like, I'm just going to go in and see what well, I can okay. find. Well, I, I, I think, you know, wandering into the tenement's not a problem. Uh, are you, you know, there, there is almost certainly, certainly some old lady uh, drunk out of her mind on gin uh, in the downstairs hall. Uh, what tells you that Clara was was living in hard times? Um, there's more than one um, drunk old lady um, um, out and about. Um, and I think you know, it's, 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 it's not just like... I, five drug old days I think it is like a lot of folks who are you know um um who are still here in tenements in the day clearly uh some of them may have been drinking some of them may just be like just sitting down looking tired um they're clearly like you know quote-unquote unskilled laborers who went out and tried to like get a, a job for the day did not end up slumped back to the tenement in defeat well, I'm curious, Chambers, is one of these one of the Hargrave House informals that you have stayed in touch with? Um, let me check my list because I'm I'm saving the right your own one for a poor fellow. We're going to use as bait for the for figs pigs. Um, <laughs> but oh, yes, see. you're looking for a disabled seamstress, aren't you? Um, well, someone who can pretend to be a disabled seamstress. Um, maybe I know a very, a very lovely actor. Um, but I think here, I, I think I'm, let's see, who have I not used? I can use this absolute unit of a hooligan. Um, barrel Staves. Barrel um, Staves, who is built as broad as he is tall. Five foot tall and four foot six wide. Um, this is a, a you know blocky. Uh, I I I see him with a shaved head, uh, with a with a hat kind of perched on it that's too small for him. Hello, Dolin. What can I do for you? Oh, I'm not meant to roll for you. Are. See if they're alive or yeah, not. Sorry, I was I was just throwing <laughs> characterization uh, okay. around. Yes. Um, uh, so go ahead. Let's see if if his only characteristic of alive or dead works for you. Wow, we got some good luck uh, today. So that's an 11, I think. Let me check. My goodness. Yes. Uh, they show up right away and do as you wish. Any roles associated with actions they help you with are taken at advantage. So uh, Barrel Staves is a local in Whitechapel. So, you know, in terms of putting yourself about in Whitechapel, some of these people might have known you back in the day, but whether they recognize you in, you know, in your uh, lower middle class dress, I think is an open question. So, um, so let's let what 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 do you do with with barrel staves and the tenement? I think um, Chambers is like stand. I think her and barrel staves are like you know, standing out near the door of Carl's flat and. Chambers is absolutely you know, like no one else gets to go in there but me. So I think she'll ask like Farrell Staves, would you mind canvassing the uh, the area as to what happened, what what's what's going on when Clara died? Oh no trouble, darling. I'll do that. Um and uh, you know, you hear him go along the landing and there's this kind of <laughs> open that fucking door. Um, uh, while you uh, go through Clara Yarbrough's, uh, you're not going to be disturbed. That's where the advantage comes from. No one's going to get past barrel staves to disturb you. Uh, so you have all the time in the world, which is where the advantage comes from. So roll with advantage. Oh, 
My wife has just wondered why I was banging the table. Hang on, it's okay. All for effect. <laughs> she you... thought I'd taken a fall. <laughs> well, you banged so say, hard. There's you... a certain age when you stop falling over and you have a fall. And I fear <laughs> that she thinks I've reached that point. So anyway, here we go. Um, so uh, all the time in the world, roll with advantage. Oh, yeah. Um, let me double check. What am I rolling with? I am rolling with um, Tick, reason. Tick all the time in the world. Yeah. So yeah. just just a, a you know a careful assessment of Clara Yarbrough's one room accommodation. Yeah, that's not going to take a while. Wow, that is barely a hit. That's a seven. Well, you know, um, you can always improve it, you know. Just saying. And By yeah. marking a mask. Yeah. Because um, you've got some of those back last time. Yeah. And they might, yeah, they might, and I get to embellish them. <laughs> since well, I, everybody wants to know more about Chambers' past. There's no question about that. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think maybe this flashback happens as she kind of like enters the flat, which is probably bare. There's probably not much there, um, ex um, except maybe a trinket or two that Chambers isn't expecting to find. So yes, I will invoke the mask of the past and reuse this um, um, flashback we used before, which for those who are watching, um, it's narrate a flashback to your young adulthood before you were a servant that shows what a charmed life you live. Um, this had been used previously, and the last time we saw Chambers in an apartment of her own, like owning with several ill-gotten games from games from a certain criminal past, including a slightly singed portrait that may or may not have been stolen from a burnt-down house. Um, <laughs> um, don't worry, that person was probably deserved it. Who knows? They were very rich, um, um, and it that flashback show chambers like entertaining people um and just kind of like you know having them over like like a like a, like a young un in <laughs> out and about in london um and i think um i think um the addition to this flashback would be um we see chambers kind of like um charting her own kind of like you know there's like a moment where Chambers like charting her own carriage out of the, you know, as in she owned the carriage. That that's how charmed <laughs> um, the criminal life was, and just like taking it to probably you know the more suburban areas of London, another rich place. Um, actually, no, no, it's probably to Whitechapel around this area. Maybe not the same tenement house, um, but a definitely like a more modest where Chambers is living at the moment. And um, as soon as we see her invite young Miss Clara Yarborough to like, you know, a nice carriage ride. And it's all very charming and romantic and lovely. It's just the two of them in this carriage where no one else can like intrude upon the world. Um, and Benos the Chambers, there, there is still someone driving um, the carriage. Um, and maybe we'll find out why Chambers just drives the carriage herself instead of having someone else do it. We'll see. Um, so I have an idea about that. But yeah, I think it's just a shot of her and Cara um, just kind of like talking and enjoying life inside that carriage. And maybe like um, Chambers gifts Cara like. Um, a very nice pen and promises to help her with her penmanship um, um, in the future. And I think um, when Chambers enters this this flat, she sees like there's very little there of worth except for this very nice um, pen. Oh, how sweet. Um, and the reason you find that pen is that um, it is it is in a drawer with a bundle of letters. Um, and these are increasingly florid love letters from someone named Gregory. 
how dare she is probably the first thing Chambers thinks. But yeah, um, unsigned love letters from, uh, sorry, uh, florid love letters from Gregory is your clue, okay? Um, Rose, uh, we're gonna take a break in, in a couple of minutes, but I wanna come back to Rose. Uh, uh, and start the process that we'll run round after we come back from our wait, break. But Rose, as we now cut back to, um, to seeing uh, Ephraim Parker um, in the recently uh, emptied room uh, of Annie Morish, um, I don't know, Ephraim, what kind of bag do you have? Is it, I, 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 is it, is it quite a, is it a trunk? Is it a small kind of handbag? What 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 kind of, of luggage have you arrived with? Uh, I you know I'm thinking I might be here a while, so probably a trunk. Fine. So uh, I'm thinking one of these kind of uh, trunks, um, you know, bound in in some exotic reptile skin. Um, and as he unlocks it and, and begins to take things out, we can't see into the trunk, but we see him taking things out. Rose, uh, now uh, just mechanically, um, what this is doing, Darren, is you will find all the way down the bottom of your character keeper, somewhere called personal quarters. At the moment, all that's in there is what Annie Morris has left you, an opaque jar in a velvet bag. Um, but now each of the other characters and I will uh, will describe something that you have brought with you. And uh, these are things that you can mark to get advantage on any role that seems fictionally at all relevant. So Rose, what do we see Ephraim taking from his trunk? Um, yeah, I'm gonna say a uh, deck of tarot cards they're it's um they're not like little ones these are decent sized ones even visually impaired people could see them they're you know, huge but very nicely drawn and obviously been used quite a few times okay Ephraim if you add the top of your personal quarters um a a, a pack of large tarot cards um uh now it is uh three minutes to I'm gonna suggest we take a break until five minutes past the hour long enough um and I will see you then for now, I will pause the recording. Uh, we're back from our break. And uh, let's, I'm gonna assume that we're all back at Hargrave House then, um, because we've had a little chat in the gap and uh, we're gonna wind up the day phase with the rest of Ephraim Parker's possessions, or the, not all of them, but some significant items that our audience uh, would have their attention drawn to. So, um, we already have a tarot card, uh, a pack of very large tarot cards. Let's go to Dr. Weiss. Dr. Weiss, what, uh, what else do we see Ephraim taking out of his, uh, his trunk? Um, I think that we see um, a... Yeah, we'll go with that. Um, I think that we um, we see a, um, um, a, a a chalice. Uh, it very much looks like you know um, uh, uh, the, the sort that might, uh, communion might be delivered from. Communion chalice. Yeah. You okay with that, Darren. Uh, so Ephraim will add a communion chalice. Um, giving Chambers an opportunity to think about what they want to add to Ephraim's personal quarters. Uh, what are you thinking, Chambers? Oh, just continuing on the theme of creating Christian rituals, I think a very expensive looking rosemary, a rosary, not rosemary, rosary. The... A very expensive rosary, Ephraim, if you add that. Uh, you've got the tarot cards from Rose. What will I add, I wonder? Um, I think, um, let's have a look. I think I'm going to have a, a candle, a thick church candle added to your quarters. 
Um, now, remind me, folks, I don't think you add anything to your own, do you? You rely on the other players to do that. Yeah. So, so that is the complete contents of your um, personal quarters in terms of mechanical uh, opportunities. Um, other stuff may crop up in game, which, which you can add in there. Um, so let's bring day to an end um, and have you, as we often do at dusk, um, gathered together um, in uh, the dining room where Chambers will serve dinner. Um, well, hang on. Isn't this the night we're supposed to go to the Masterminds Ball thing? or It, it is, wrong? but only at night, not at dusk. Um, so, perform the following steps in order. Resolve any playbook moves or custom moves that are resolved during the dusk phase. Any takers? Uh, yes. <laughs> so, uh, and I, you know, again, I, I've been reading this move with some care. The invitation here is to improve it to 10, so you get all the advantage of being a feral beast with none of the associated disadvantages. I've been called worse. <laughs> so the quickening, roll with composure or sensitivity, which is it to be, Rose? Oh, it's the same either way. So mm, it wouldn't be composure after today. Uh, I think it would be sensitivity. So let's go. Da, 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 da. 11. Damn it. <laughs> 11. God, blimey, you lot are rolling some dice today. So on 10 plus, your body is stronger and faster, and you manage to keep the quickening in check. You roll with advantage when taking actions that use vitality until the next dawn phase. Now, I'm curious, Rose, how do we, the audience, know that you are empowered by the beast rather than in the beast's control? She's just more energy. It's like she's just chugged down a couple of Red Bulls or something. She's She was tired before dusk, and now she's spring around and yeah fine um and even that limp doesn't look quite as bad does it because uh, no. what this will do is that advantage will cancel the limp if i choose to invoke it for um uh for uh kind of disadvantage purposes um i don't think there are any other dusk moves unless I'm um, I, oh so go ahead oh go on chambers Yes, so day work does trigger even if I do <laughs> something during the day. Oh, going down to the flat, which is an errand, but I still, you know, I still spend most days caring for Hargrave House. Of course you do. Up. You just get to see it. So far, it's always been off screen. Now we see you managing accounts, tidying up, answering callers. Choose one. Um, yes, I think I will give, I'll find something of use in the house. I think there are a pair of um, um, you know, nice like gloves. Um, they're almost gonna they're used for like um, um, you know, for for heavy weather or for sorry, I'm looking at hunting gloves right now. I wonder if that was a thing. Um, and yeah, some kind of leather gloves. So the, these these aren't elegant evening gloves up to the elbow. These are um, these are practical, heavy duty gloves. Yes, um, they're. And who do you give them to? Yes, I know this is a counter to what our new um, uh, attendant, our new uh, uh, um, not attendant lodger in Hargrave House can do but you know sometimes maybe you just need like to not sense everything <laughs> through through touch so I think Chambers will just kind of like give them side offer them something to uh Mr. Parker. Um, You've not been in the house a matter of hours Ephraim and Chambers the uh housekeeper stroke butler stroke senior servant is giving you gifts add thick uh he or heavy duty gloves to your uh, personal quarters. Uh, thank you for that, Chambers. Um, oh, everyone's getting down. Uh, sorry, I'd forgotten about those new moves you've chosen. So, so Dr. Vice, night work. Yes, um, I, yeah, I do have night work, uh, though I am not going to activate it this evening, um, as, I, as I do want to attend this ball. 
Okay, so you don't, you don't, it's an entire choice to you. Okay. Um, and uh, so then uh, the only person who doesn't have a dusk move then at the minute is, is Ephraim. Um, the keeper poses the paint you see in question. Where have we got to? Uh, oh, the dining room. How finally appropriate. Um, you don't take meals together often. Well, that's not our experience. But tonight is an exception. What's on the menu? Rose? Chambers know something of your proclivities. What's on the menu? Um, quail. Quail. Tiny quail. Um, well, they are, but yes. <laughs> okay. Quail is on the menu. Um, Chambers, what have what have you particularly added, perhaps, to encourage your your the you know the, the your new your new lodger, Mr. Parker? But I'm curious, what have you put on the menu tonight, Chambers? My phone is ringing. I'll send away. Um, I'd ask him straight up what he wants. Oh well, no, I'm going to come to I'm going to come and ask him. So so what what uh, what do you want then, Chambers? Okay, all right. Um, I think Chambers used to have a very rich appetite, and now she just likes simpler things. So, you know, some cold cuts, some, some dry, some dry porridge, no, maybe not dry porridge. That's horrible. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think that she normally doesn't eat uh, on, on the, in, with, in the dining room, except uh, you know, on occasion, as as happening right now. So when she does, pe people kind of weird that you know find out that you know, she just she just prepares a sandwich for herself. Um, okay, no, that it's works. Nice, it's a nice bread. That's about it. Um, uh, and um, Doctor Vice, what what are you enjoying on the menu this evening? Um, I think. Um... Um, Dr. Weiss is um, uh, eating um, uh, eating a bowl of mock turtle soup. Um, uh, but the, um, uh, the I think the thing that's perhaps slightly unusual um, on on this uh, uh, on this uh, uh, bill of fare this evening is that um, the bread that he is is dipping into his soup um, is a like a proper dark heavy uh, rye bread. Uh, one of those solid black breads from European Central Europe. Okay, uh, and final, finally, Ephraim, what uh, what are you pleased to see on the menu tonight? Um, I think I would be happy to see the cold cuts and bread. Um, he uh, is maybe not accustomed to the foods of the uh, landed peoples. No, I like that. And, and also, of course, Chambers, it, 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 it makes for a light dinner on the assumption that anyone who is going to attend the ball uh, is likely to, 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 to not want to be going there on a heavy stomach. Um, okay, that works well for me. Thank you. Um, each player says, what their hunter will be doing during the upcoming, upcoming night phase. Again, for, for Darren, just to, to make you clear about this, in the dusk phase, you get to tell me what it is your intention to do. I may interfere and do some other stuff to you or with you. Um, and, and we go around once, and then I go around again just to check in with anyone uh, that might want to change their mind on the basis of what others have said. So I'm going to leave you to the last, uh, just so you can see how this how this works. So let's start with Rose. Rose, um, I suppose that the simple question is: Do you intend to attend the ball at Braithwaite Hall, or do you have another option in mind? Um, I'll go to the ball. You shall go to the ball tonight, Miss Rose. Um, what about Chambers? Now, clearly, you can't attend the ball per se, but, um, you know, I'm imagining that, you know, servants, maids, other people uh, will, be, uh, will be allowed in the building because you might have to attend to your master's, you know, you have a, a dress malfunction. 
That is true. It's but true. I don't want to, you know, you don't have to. The thing is, like, I think I mentioned this last week, but Chambers is utterly fixated on this no face. Um, maybe this is like one of the few but noticeable times when she just outright doesn't like share this the doctor vice and it's like well, you can bumble you can bumble by yourself tonight however if if he does need me i have a move for this so, of course you have of course you have you may have been there all the time yes okay um uh moving along to dr vice what's your thinking dr vice uh, yeah D- dr vice is is absolutely um intending to um uh, um, go to the uh, go to the ball as the sole uh, representative of Hargrave House, if need be, but is is more than willing to accompany anyone else there. Um, now, Ephraim, just to clarify here, this is an invitation that was delivered to Annie Morish, and it only came to, to it came to light yesterday when it was found when Chambers found it in her bag after she had been uh, after she died bloodily. And so there is a slight, there is a blood-stained thumbprint, at least on the corner of this uh, otherwise pristine, thick card invitation to uh, a ball at Braithwaite House. Um, uh, I think I will point out that it says um, that the ball, uh, the Fellowship of Dreamers will be in attendance at the ball at Braithwaite House. And... uh, Ephraim, you will recognize that from Annie's um, telegrams, that uh, the cavern is in London calling itself the Fellowship of Dreamers. Um, So, Ephraim, do you want to go to the ball or would you prefer to wander the streets of London? You know, I I think I want to go to the ball. And if I am questioned, I'll just say that... uh, uh, she asked me to attend to her affairs uh, upon her demise. Oh, let me stress that though Annie kept it to herself when she received it, it is to the occupiers, Hargrave House. So all of you are technically invited on this single invitation. So don't worry about having to make excuses. Um, okay, I will just go round. Rose, haven't changed your mind. Uh, Chambers, haven't changed your mind. Dr. Vice hasn't changed their mind. And we've just heard from Ephraim, so I'm assuming you haven't changed your mind since you made your decision a moment ago. So um, so everyone's going to the ball apart from Chambers. Chambers, what exactly are you going to do then? Really tight the drink there. Um, Sorry. Yeah, I think um, she is going to go back to Whitechapel and try to answer some questions. Oh um, right, okay. And I I think like I can yes because of this tying in this backstory, she is absolutely fixated on this threat, probably to the detriment of all the other threats. Um, but yeah, she is gonna like go out and it's a bit reckless. Maybe run into some unsavory sorts. Who knows? Um, it depends if they know you or not. If words got out about what you did to Jiminy's mate, then uh, then you know you're probably as safe as houses. Uh, but we'll find out, won't we? Okay, so you're going to Whitechapel. Um, now, the other bit of this, and again, I'll go into this with a bit more detail because uh, we've got a new player. Um, you will find a tab called London at Night, The Unseen. And The Unseen has uh, needn't have anything particularly connected to our plot. It is simply to increase our feeling for and understanding of this London. Um, And I am going to go with the tarot reading of Ms. Lydia Wainwright, uh, which is E1, in fact. It's the top row of these. Um, And uh, though technically this should start, because everybody else has had a go, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around uh, again, and I'm going to go back to rows, because it seems to me really unfair to throw a new player into doing this uh, without having seen it done. So, um, as as we cut away from dinner at Hargrave House and then Dr. Vice uh, getting into his his best bib and tucker, uh, Ephraim perhaps uh, having Chambers brush down his only smart coat, 
And I'm fascinated to know, Rose, what you're going to be wearing, but I'll come back to that. Um, we cut to a young woman, Lydia Wainwright, uh, 19. She clearly lives in a respectable family. Um, and But we, we come into a, a, a family scene where her mother is, is saying, my dear Lydia, Edgar Thornton is son of a wealthy industrialist, um, and I am commanding you that you will marry him, I tell you. Um, Samuel, this boy that you clean, uh, I mean, Lydia, he's a chimney sweep, for goodness sake, that you claim to, to, to love, can offer you nothing. Um, and then we, we cut to her uh, just wrapping uh, a, a shawl over her head and shoulders as she sneaks out into the night um, in search of a fortune teller seeking guidance on this matter. Rose, paint the scene. As Lydia enters the home of the fortune teller, what do we see that shows this place has real magic? Um, I think there's like a lot. There's like multiple sets of candles and incense. It's not just for illumination. That's obviously it's in different purposes. Is there, I mean, do the candles behave in a way that shows us that there's magic at work here or? Um, yeah, like some of them are just perfectly, the flames are perfectly um, upright, but others um, move in at different speeds depending on who's standing near them. And you can tell when the, the fortune teller gets close to them and Lydia gets close to them. So, it... so um, an aid memoir on that would be what? Something like uh, candle flames that move independently or, or yeah, something? Yeah, react to chakra. Fine. Um, let me move along from Rose to Chamber. Uh, no, then we play Rose. I will get this right before I finish this run. So Rose, we now cut to Braithwaite Hall. Uh, Braithwaite Hall is a, uh, a Regency pile in miles of parkland on the edge of London. Um, and uh, it is th there, are, there are braziers burning on the drive as the Hargrave House carriage takes you in. Um, how are you dressed, Rose? Because you're, I mean, I'm just reminding myself of, of your normal attire, which, um, which is, and I quote, um, a bolo tie with turquoise inlay and crocodile boots with lapis detail. Um, is this how you would appear? Or are yes, you I've got order? shirt and pants. I've got Fine. shirt and pants. Fine. So, uh, you, you continue to dress like the Westerner you are. Fine. Oh, if, if anything, I'm overdoing it. Oh, really? Right. So how, yes, how, how, are you, how are you more out of place? I'll probably even have a hat on. <laughs> um, and uh, as I say, lots of... You do attract some attention as you walk through the house, Rose, um, because... You know, there, there are women here in gorgeous ball grounds. There are gentlemen in stiff collars and, uh, and, and formal evening wear. Yeah. Uh, and a number of eyebrows are raised. What do we see you doing, Rose, as we seek to resolve your night phase? Yeah, I'll just mingle and you know, pretend I misunderstood and <laughs> I didn't. I'm just, yeah, I'm, I'm going the obvious diversion so that the other zealots can do whatever they need to subtly um so uh there is you will see that there is there is there is there are drinks a punch on the side there is a table laden with uh party food of one kind or another the servants are all in a sapphire, sapphire blue silk livery i'll um, ask any of the servants um you know is any of the fellowship here um let's uh let's 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 go to the information move um is this your charm at work with the servants yeah i'm always nice to them okay not, so roll yeah. plus uh presence and let's That's see what wonderful. we see eight so nine nine 
Okay, do you want to improve that or are you content to have this complicated? No, I prefer to have it complicated. I'm not going to cause trouble. <laughs> um, okay, um, uh, and, and I think there's probably a footman. Uh, and, and, and you can see that he, he's, he's trying not to look at you, but staring ahead um, as, as if to say, I, I, I'm not sure how to react to this person. Um, uh, and he says, uh, yes, sir, 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 uh, uh, miss, um, uh, sir, miss, uh, yes, uh, indeed they are. They've been here all day. Um, uh, they've spent a large amount of time in the library. So your clue for the coven is they've spent a large amount of time in the library. Um, uh, they were looking at a particular uh, at a, a particular section, but I, I, I couldn't see, I, I wasn't certain where, I was just dusting. Um, the complication, Rose, is you will have to go to the library in order to uh, work out what they have been looking at. Okay. So it's worked out for me great so far, so. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Um, I am curious how you are going to work out how they, which bit of the library they were they were examining, which yeah. section. How are you going to do that, Rose? Think about that, because I think I'm going to come back to you. I can't limit my night phases to just one action, folks. It's just not in me. Um, let me now cut to Chambers. Chambers, let's go to the next bit of our tarot re reading of Ms. Lydia Wainwright. The first two cards drawn are the five card of in the five card spread are the lovers and the ace of wands, the latter of which is typically associated with passion. Speaking in the voice of the fortune teller, not necessarily accent, accent, begin telling Lydia what you see in the cards. I think the fortune teller um, will kind of like lay out those cards and kind of like I think Lydia uh, has had her like you know, arms folded on her lap, being like looking quite apprehensive. I think the fortune will like, reach out and like grab her hands, kind of clasp them in between, and say, "My dear Miss Wainwright, these are fortunate cards that are foretelling your future, or at least a direction that would bring you good fortune. They tell of new beginnings of." a fruitful restart to your life. After all, have you not been so, have you not felt so cloistered within your most respectable family? That same cloistering will continue if you pursue our yonder industrialist here, but the wands, wands point to Perhaps a harsher start, but a better one in the future, my dear, my dear. And I think like she kind of like, lets go, uh, the fortune teller lets go of Miss Lydia's hands and puts them down on the table and pats them, kind of like. Um, I, I, you know, alter this if you feel the need, but I've said new beginnings and a fruitful restart to her life. Um, and then we cut chambers to you in my generic, You'd think with a with a, with a series we were spending this much money on, they would have more than a single street in East London, but this is our consistent street. So, what do we see you doing as in Whitechapel? Um, I think I'm back in the tenement house. I'm looking up and around it, and I think um, I am. I'm going to try to answer a question. Uh, which here. threat are we looking at? Oh, uh, Sally No Face. Okay. Uh, and the first thing here is, where is the killer hiding? Resolve this threat by uh, by infiltrating the killer's lair, then capturing or destroying them. Okay. So, uh, yeah. you're I get looking... the feeling... Oh, sorry. No, go on. You're looking to answer this question. Um, yes. Now, again, <laughs> I, I just want to explain how this works for Darren, our new player. So, Darren, what this means is that um, if you look at the Sally No Face threat you will see that we've got uh, a handful of clues, I think five clues. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go around the group, starting with uh, with Chambers, uh, to ask 
how they're going to ask the first question, where is the killer hiding? Um, so what are you thinking, Chambers? Uh, where, where are you going to take us with these five clues? Yes. Also, because uh, we were talking about this last week, I do get the feeling that like, we get to choose which question we want to answer. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, then, then yeah. But, you know, Chambers doesn't give a damn about emphasizing with the killer. So we're, we're, with the, we're, we're going with the, with the top question. Um, who knows? That might open up uh, Avenue to answer the other questions. But yeah, I think um, easily enough, uh, I think um, Chambers has the uh, sheaf of increasingly Floyd love letters um, unsigned. Um, and uh, the way he explained is that like, this is like penmanship that is close to hers, AKA this is penmanship she's taught to someone um um before and they're unsigned and clearly unsent but they're clearly meant for someone named gregory um and i think like the explanation to this is like um this is like an infatuation uh, infatuation clara had with someone named gregory um and someone named gregory who clearly must live if not in Whitechapel, chapel dead nearby because otherwise how would a washerwoman um, have gotten to know um, to know them. Maybe, maybe the, they knew, maybe Carr knew them closer than, than Chambers expecting if she's writing all these love letters, but I think that needs a personal connect, uh, semi-personal as in like. Okay, so, so what I want you to do is to tick the explained column uh, on this. Um, and let me go, uh, I'll go to Dr. Weiss next. Can you, can you tie a clue uh, or a piece of information or explain it in some other way, Dr. Weiss, that would link this to this unknown Gregory? Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, quite simply, the, um, uh, the um, uh, exhibition the um that the, the, we received the inf invitation um for was was hosted by this this gregory we we how we find that out you know is 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 uh there but yeah that's the um gregory is the name of the man who has has been throwing this art exhibition and is is presumably which which links him to more than you know another of the he's obviously been in in contact with um uh with clara directly through these letters or clara's been in contact with with him um this one of the other victims um was clearly invited to this this uh exhibition that he threw um yeah fine so tick that box um and then let me move on to rose can you do anything with the remaining three clues I've just realized I'm making this more difficult, Darren, because I'm leaving him at the end with fewer clues to play with. But oh, hopefully you get you get a drift, Darren. Oh, Very yeah, cool. that, that's OK. We're looking at Sally, uh, Sally No Face, aren't we? We or? are. Yeah, OK. So expensive perfume. Um, yeah, I mean, I, maybe it's just a, a, across the street from a perfume from a perfume shop or something. Okay, so uh, Gregory's lair might be um, opposite a perfume perfumery somewhere. Fine, tick that. So remember, we're trying to find out where is the killer hiding. So we've got a name, Gregory. We believe that he's involved in not just young Clara, but with uh, at least one of the other bodies. Um, there, his lair might be across the street from a perfumier. Um, Ephraim, can you offer me anything around flecks of blood in a pristine place or a new victim, their face removed in a grisly, imprecise fashion? Um, sure, I can uh, take a stab at that, no pun intended. Um, and uh, let's see here, a new victim. Um, I'm thinking maybe a uh, heavily perfumed body was found um, in a uh, somewhat uh, untoward part of town. Um, 
I, you'll have to forgive me. I haven't been to London for like. Oh, God, don't worry. Years, I mean, so. we only ever go to Whitechapel. Don't worry. Okay. Um. Yeah, and uh, you know, it, it, the the I, I don't. I, I think we sort of have a veil on gore, so I'll just say that um, the the face was uh, hastily and um, uh, vigorously removed. Right. Uh, as if anger, like a lot of anger and hate were uh, driving it. I go with that. If you took put a tick in the explained box, um, we will now be at a flat 2D6. I'm going to go back around to chambers where this started. Um, can you involve flecks of blood in a pristine place and then tell me where you think the layer is? Yeah, I think um, this these facts of blood stand out for like two things. One, because you know there is like the area. This is like right on the border of like Whitechapel to like um, probably a more affluent part of London, which is probably not true <laughs> IRL, but we'll say it is um, <laughs> a, a slightly cleaner part. And I think like it is like this. I think Chambers is kind of. Like, has has been kind of reading the letters, putting this kind of together, and has kind of wandered to it. We'll see, like, yeah, the per, the per, the perfume shop, um, and let her eyes wander to like right across it, which is like these row of like um, um, shut up um businesses, like this is like a row of them with like a closed up. Um, actually, no. Um, I'm gonna say actually it's like one big like um, um, shut up like um, it's just like a large warehouse kind of building. Suddenly we're next to the Thames. I, the geography probably makes no sense, um, but I think it's. I think Which like um, for me, a large warehouse next to the Thames is your is what you're pitching at, yeah. Yep. Okay, so tick that uh, those last flecks of blood to give you a plus one on the dice roll. And again, just to explain what's about to happen is that um, uh, Chambers will now roll 2d6 plus one, uh, and we'll find out if it is a large warehouse, uh, and then it is possible to resolve the threat. I just, I, can, I, can I embellish the warehouse? Oh, um, can. It's well, do you abandoned... want to know if it's right first? Yes, yes. I, I do want to say that, like, uh, maybe instead of a warehouse, like an abandoned candle making factory. Fine. Oh, of course you do. Yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. okay. Yes. Yes. I want okay. to speak. So, <laughs> so, um, so go ahead and roll two d six plus one. Okay. As we now are in the move right at the bottom, which is answer a question. Yeah. Let's see if it, good rolls keep coming. Yes, they do. That's a ten. Oh my goodness me! So on ten plus. It's the correct answer and an opportunity can be pursued. So there is now an opportunity to resolve that threat. Uh, so I'm going to mark that as a tick. Um, so you can resolve that one um, some other night. Um, Not so, for now, no. <laughs> that's too much work. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> um, uh, let me now go to Dr. Weiss as we return to the tarot reading of Miss. Lydia Wainwright. The next two cards drawn are the Five of Swords, typically associated with violence, and the Fool, which represents the beginning of a journey. Continue the fortune teller's card reading. Ah, uh, yes, my girl, I can see hidden in the cards. There is violence to come. But whether it is against you or by you, I cannot tell. Do you think you have that capacity within you? No matter what happens, you will need to leave London. You will never find the happiness you uh, crave here. Um, and she will reach out with a hand. Um, it's old and, and gnarled and the, the skin's like old cracked leather. Um, um, as she grips um, uh, um, Lydia's hand. 
Uh, so I've scribbled down, leave London to find happiness. Does that seem fair? Okay. Um, so Dr. Weiss, let us, let us um, cut to you and then I will interleave something about Rose's complication. Um, so Dr. Weiss, we see you at Braithwaite Hall. Um, there are servants, there are guests, there are there is the uh, fellowship of dreamers are about to start their um, their presentation is that the right word i don't know um what do we see you doing dr vice um i think dr vice is going to be looking around um uh the room for um uh, their hostess um uh, for the evening, um, but um, it, it will be paying paying you know some attention to what's going on with this uh, fellowship of dreamers as well. But yeah, I think I think um, that's his priority. Okay, um, uh, you make some inquiries, and it's clear that um, that that uh, the lady of the house is is not at the party. Um, and a few inquiries uh, suggest that, that, oh no, Theodora never, never comes to these things. Um, uh, it, it, it's largely to, to satisfy her daughter, uh, Tatiana. And, uh, and, and they gesture to, um, let me describe Tatiana Braithwaite to you. Uh, she, cuts the same kind of incongruous appearance as Rose does. Um, she's dressed in, in, in riding gear, jodhpurs, knee-high boots, uh, a tight riding jacket, and a top hat. Um, exquisitely cut, uh, almost as cutting as her perpetual sneer. Um, and, um, and do you approach? Yeah, um, I think um, uh, Dr. Weiss will um, approach like near, but not quite introducing himself to her. Um, he will um, place a, um, a fresh cigarette into, I think he has a cigarette holder with him this evening. Um, he leans down, um, uh, leads down towards the flame, the candle sort of um, puts a hand around it and, and lights the cigarette on um, uh, on it, um, on, the, on the flame. Um, and um, takes in a, in a in a breath and um, uh, and then um, blows out uh, blows out the smoke and then turn, and then sort of turns to um, um, uh, Tatiana um, and says, um, "Good evening, Miss Braithwaite. It's a um, uh, may I uh, offer you a cigarette?" And he'll he'll um, ha hold out the um, his uh, uh, gold cigarette case. Uh, and and is are these are these these little Turkish cigarettes? Yes, they're, yeah. They're, they're oval in cross section, not round. Um, are they are they wrapped in gold? gold yeah, they've got the sort of little gold tips on them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and she looks at you and raises an eyebrow, looks at the cigarettes, and thinks, well, it seems suitable. And she says, "Who are you?" My name is Doctor Victor Weiss. I am a uh, um, a former companion of the. Uh, dearly departed um, uh, um, Sister Annie Morish, uh, who received our invitation for this evening. Um, oh, I... Ma told me she invited you. Indeed. Well, um, I am I'm pleased. I, uh, I'm, um, it, it's a, a pleasure to meet you. Um, I, I confess my, uh, I am no longer quite as, uh, uh, familiar with the um, society pages as once I was. Uh, um, oh, Pa, I hate the society pages. And she, she leans away from him, looks at me down. I prefer the hunt. Ah, well, I, I can't say that uh, um, the outdoors uh, is, is entirely my thing, but uh, I understand the, um, the desire. You, you really ought to meet a, uh, uh, another of my friends. I, I think the two of you would get along quite well. Uh, does, does, does he ride to hounds? Um, 
she oh she i, I don't know that uh i don't a know close about friend doctor uh not so very close um but no she is is uh um an american of all things oh my goodness how exotic quite so quite so um she you know um goes in for all the uh he'll kind of gesture towards her um uh what is the uh what is the term for it cowboy uh um outfits and the like it's uh most refreshing i wonder if she hunts i just love the scent of prey you can smell their fear you know I do indeed, uh, Miss uh, uh, Miss Prathwright. I do indeed. Are you angling towards anything particular here, Doctor Rice? Um, I I think just generally kind of getting getting her measure, really. Yeah. Um, so possibly an information move, but yeah, yeah nothing. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I think see what I can do for you on an information move. So uh, this sounds like presence. I mean, you did seem to be wanting to get her to talk to you. Yep, yep. Um, I do seem to keep ending up talking to people, which is a terrible move for me. Uh, <laughs> uh, that is a six. Um, well, well, a six, a. Eh? Um, okay. She says, no, no, we cut to Dr. Weiss running through the gardens of Braithwaite Hall, uh, pursued by hounds. Excellent. Now, uh, Dr. Weiss, you have, of course, got the option. Yeah, I, I think it's a little early in the evening to be, be, be savaged by a pack of hounds, so I will... Um, which mask Ooh, will you mark? It's a good question. Um, I think. Wait, hasn't Chambers got a thing? A Chambers does have a thing. I don't know if Chambers wants to intervene here. Um, I felt I needed to, to ask the, Dr. Yeah, that's Rice up to the doctor. If he wanted to kind of. Um, yeah, no, I think I'm. I'm more interested in actually getting something out of her rather than um, being savaged by our hounds. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm going to, um, I'm going to go for the mask of the past again, I think. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to narrate a flashback to the happiest day that you shared with the person you lost. Um, and I think, um, um, yeah, I think actually the, um, that uh, we see, um, again, a scene of a, of a, slightly younger uh um dr vice um uh, uh strolling along with uh with kit um uh, is is um yeah so an aristocratic uh, uh looking man taller and broader um than than um victor with sort of long flowing golden hair um they're both dressed in sort of like um uh lighter um uh sort of linen suits um in uh you know tan colors with bright uh um uh, shirts and ties underneath um and i think we just sort of see uh, it's very much a kind of like montage scene of them um uh strolling um strolling around um uh florence um uh you know go walking along the ponte vecchio and uh um uh, all that light. exactly yeah yeah um and um i think we just kind of get um that where, where it fits is yeah there's a sort of the um um there's the sort of sun's sun setting um over the city bathing everything in that sort of um deep red uh light um uh we just see um they've both got kind of um shaved ice uh with 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 flavored syrups over it that they're um um uh, looking at and they just um turn turn to each other um, and kiss each other softly on the lips um, 
um, yeah, as the sun goes down. Lovely, lovely. Um, I'm feeling better about Kit than I was at the last the end of the last session. I was beginning to get a bit suspicious about the power that was at work with Kit. Um, uh, so that improves that failure too. There's a complication either with the clue itself or a complication you encounter while searching for it. Um, I'm going to give you a clue, I think. Do you want this to be a mastermind clue or do you find something about one of your other current live threats? Um, I would be... I feel like if it's a clue for one of the existing threats, I wonder maybe something related to uh, figs pigs might be interesting. Uh, it seems thematically appropriate, but I am also uh, I am also very cool with a um, uh, with a mastermind clue. So whichever whichever you're more interested in, I'm I'm happy either way. Yes, let's um, let's. Hmm. I will give you a clue for Figs Pigs. As Tatty slots her arm through yours and wanders into the dining room saying, come on, let's volunteer. Um, and as you breeze through, you see a dusty skeleton dressed in finery. That is a Figs Pigs clue. Okay. Perfect, yeah, thank you. Um, and uh, I've, I've still got a complication around Rose and I've got a complication around Dr. Weiss that I'm sure something will come to me in the next five minutes that might allow me to bind those together. Um, I am inclined to say it is just five to the hour. Um, shall we take our last break here and return to Ephraim so that then we'll ask Ephraim to do the last bit of the tarot reading and then do his scene uh, which I'm hoping he's going to frame around whatever the um, uh, the the Coven's Fellowship of Dreamers are going to do. But um, it's three minutes to now. Shall we say five past the hour again? OK, I'll see you then. Sounds good. So we have Dr. Weiss being led through to uh, the room where the Fellowship of Dreamers are uh, doing the, about to start their presentation and Tati is volunteering him as a uh, as a um, subject shall we say for this presentation we have Rose in the library uh, and Rose you found that uh, a section of the library there's lots of stuff taken from one section of the library lots of blueprints um, and let me say that the cavern spent a lot of time in there were they looking at old bl blueprints of court buildings railway stations lighthouses or something else Yeah, court buildings. Blueprints of court buildings. Okay. Um, I'll come to your complication in a moment. Uh, let us go to Ephraim Parker. Ephraim, the last part of the London at Night Unseen. The last card drawn is the devil representing the seduction of the material world and other earthly pleasures. Continue your reading and then tell Lydia definitively whether she should marry Edgar Thornton, the son of the wealthy industrialist, or run off with the handsome chimney sweep. What do you make of the devil representing the seduction of the material world, uh, uh, Ephraim? Um, I had a question. Uh, I didn't know if this was going too far, but uh, could I say it's the devil inverted? I, I know nothing about tarot, so that doesn't bother me at all. Oh, okay. So when the devil is inverted, it's more, uh, from what I understand, it's more about exploring dark thoughts and letting go of beliefs that bind you. Oh, fine. Go with it. Just go with um, it. So, yeah, I think, uh, you know, the the reader leans forward and says, well, this is uh, 
this kind of ties it all up. Uh, it would appear the devil is inverted. So um, you must let go of things that you have believed to be true for a long time. And I can sense the dark thoughts within you and um, you must cultivate them. Uh, this is the only way you will find happiness and perhaps save your life. So, and, and she re uh, Lydia reaches across to the hands of of the 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 uh, fortune teller and says, "So, what should I do? What should I do?" It seems very clear that you must run away with this chimney sweep um, and let go of your past life and uh accept the new person that you are becoming um i'm gonna write down uh run off with the chimney sweep sorry if i'm being too verbose here no no, no i love it uh run off no i mean i i think that the difficulty i think of this mechanic is that it invites you to come up with quite rich scenes doesn't leave a lot of space to do it in um and then expects you to type all that in while you're then framing your night scene, which I think is a big ask. So that's an aid memoir. None of what you said is gone. That's just an aid memoir. So um, let us then cut to Ephraim um, looking around Braithwaite House. And as I say, um, I'm going to frame this a little bit to tell you what's going on. So a lot of there are still people about, servants, other people about. Um, but a lot of people have gone through the large ballroom uh, and have formed a circle around a circular table in the middle of the ballroom. And seated uh, around that are a number of guests, including Dr. Weiss. Um, and he is sitting on one side, holding the hand of uh, Tatiana Braithwaite with one hand, and on the other side, a hood, a cowled and hooded figure is holding his other hand. And there is a chain of half a dozen people coming round the circular table um, to the seat that remains, um, to the seat that remains empty on the other side of the hooded figure. Ephraim, what do we see you doing? Um, well, this seems like a situation I need to take advantage of. Uh, so, He's going to sort of uh, cold read the people who are circling around and um, try and pick someone to uh, uh, sit uh, in the empty seat. And what he's going to try to do is just sort of lead them by the hand to the seat and then uh, put their hand in the hooded figure's hand so he can touch both of them and see if he can get anything out of that. So so just to be clear, then I've got the hooded figure. On one side, I've got Dr. Weiss, then Tatiana Braithwaite and other people. And on this side, just let me be clear, are you taking the hand of the hooded figure or are you taking the hand of the person holding the hand of the hooded figure? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought there was an empty seat next there to There is the next to the hooded figure. So that you're in that seat. That's fine. Fine. So Oh, so oh, no, actually I wanted to lead someone from the crowd into that seat. Oh, then that's the only spare seat going. Oh, yeah, no, that's fine. I just want to um essentially see if I can touch the hands of two uh possible suspicious people this way. So um, I lead I, I think you're gonna struggle with that given the setup I've given you. But I certainly, okay. uh, you know, if you want to if you want to try and get somebody to leave so you can sit anywhere in this circle, that's fine by me. Oh, OK. Um, you know what? Then I will. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll just sit down. And... I, I'll, I'll tell you, these look like ordinary guests. There are no other members of the of the fellowship in the circle. Ah, uh, OK. I see what you're sorry. I see what you're saying. Um, yeah. yeah, then then I will just sit down and. Uh, take her hand first and then the uh person on the other side of me um and uh tatty braithwaite says uh, well master theodosius we seem to have a circle uh, you'd best get on with it um 
and and the candles in the room begin to flicker. And Dr. Weiss, you, you, you feel pressure in that hand that is being held by Master Theodosius. And Tatty Braithwaite is holding the other hand quite tightly. Rose, uh, when you pick out the blueprints of courts in London, uh, you hear a voice in your ear, but there's nobody in the room. But the candle you're reading to, la to using to, to read by flickers. Um, and, and the voice says, ah, what do we have here? A little beast in the big city. Dr. Weiss, you hear a voice in your ear. It says, oh, look, a man who wants to conquer death. How quaint, how so very, very quaint. Ephraim, you hear a voice, it says, aha, dear Annie's friend, come to town in search of who knows what. Meanwhile, the rest of the crowd is hearing Master Theodosius chanting. Um, Ephraim, what if anything do you do? Um, I'll try and get a read on the uh, cloaked figure uh, if I can. Um, is this rites of salt and smoke? Or I would be prepared, given that it is the deepest night and the lights are flickering out, to go with a beacon in the dark. What's your uh, preference? Yeah, beacon in the dark sounds good. When you walk the streets of London at night, you ca your consciousness spreading across the city like a vast spider web, roll with sensitivity. Roll with sensitivity. Oh, I'm not seeing a die. Uh, I'm hitting the die oh, here. Right. So, sorry, I should have explained this. So, if you click on the dice you're interested in rolling, you'll get a little highlight around it. Then, click on the other one that you're interested in rolling and get a line around it. And then, the little purple kind of revolve signal, uh, re revolve button at the bottom of the thing will light up and allow you to hit it. Does that make sense? Uh, I'm seeing a seven. Uh, yep. Plus your sensitivity is two, I'm guessing. Nine. So on a hit, you were immediately confronted by a threat. Oh, yes. You are immediately confronted as you the lights go out, as far as you are concerned, Ephraim. And around the table are a whole group of hooded figures. The only people who aren't hooded are you and Dr. Weiss. And in a spotlight over there is Rose. Um, you may ask them two questions from the list below. Hang on, what, on a hit, blah, 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 on a 10 plus the third. Oh, right, so on a 10 plus the threat or danger departs as soon as the question is answered. Looks like they're not gonna go of their own accord, Ephraim. Um, so I, do, I can offer you the opportunity to improve that seven to nine to a 10 plus by donning a mask, either of the past or the future. Do you want to improve the outcome? Or... Oh, I do. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about the masks? Yeah. So if you go up to the masks, um, these are all unique to each of you. And this is the only way that we find out the past of the characters. So you'll find the mask of the past there. And they will light up as you work your way through. So at the moment, you could narrate a flashback to the time when you were in your mother's womb that shows that even then, dark entities were interested in you. If you tick that, you do the narration and you get a 10 plus outcome on this, on this move. Alternatively, you have a free choice of 
ticking a mask of the future, any one of those five. Um, I will tell you just for reference that the, the you all have access to this old bones move that allows you to talk to ghosts. Um, in order to do that, you have to have the cosmic passage marked. Um, but the other ones have a variety of effects as described. Are you tempted by a mask? Um, yeah, I'll go with the past first here. Okay. So narrate a time when you were in your mother's womb that shows that even then, dark entities were interested in you, Ephraim Parker. Uh, so I'm going to go with, uh, you know, like one of the reasons why he indulges in absinthe is he um, sort of gets that feeling like when he real when he was aware of himself in the womb and um this memory uh he is just sort of floating floating um he's happy uh he maybe reaches out and touches the wall and um but then uh there's almost like a face emerging he, he can't see what it is and then uh it gets closer and um it's a very human face of a woman um but uh her facial expressions and her teeth are very inhuman and um easy you know obviously terrified uh and uh we hear that terrified embryonic people. heart double up double up double up double up Yep. Um, maybe a, uh, you know, his mouth opens in a silent scream. And that is the face you see when each of the hooded figures raises and are illuminated by the flickering candle in the middle of the round table. Rose, you, the voice can just say, don't you just love? the sense of freedom that you get, little beast? Wouldn't you just love to run free? Here, let us help you. And Dr. Weiss, you hear, oh, you want to conquer death? Let's start with something a little easier, shall we? And uh, back in the real world, there are kind of <gasps> around the room as the skin on the back of the hand of both your hands, Victor, uh, dries and crackles and ages and begins to develop liver spots, aging spots, and then begin to begins to crack and bleed between the knuckles. Rose, you can feel something happening to you. What is the first physical sign of your transformation, Rose? Um, yeah, just get hairier. So, you know, um, look, arms and legs and um, sideburns. You look down at, the, at your hand on those blueprints and you can see that golden hair beginning to thicken on the back of your hands. Um, Rose, would you add the mark of the beast as your condition. And Dr. Weiss, would you mark husk as a condition? Ephraim, you can now ask those questions from the move. Okay, let me uh, review here. On a hit, you're confronted by a threat. Um, you may ask them two questions from the list below.
I've just noticed the uh, the note in the chat from Chambers. Okay, I'm kidding. Maybe it's time to show up. You do have that move, Chambers. So, Ephraim, what are you thinking? Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I thought uh, maybe I had my mute button on still. Uh, I oh, was that's thinking terrible. You, you, we missed all the really good stuff. Don't go for it. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, what do you intend to do? Okay, I will give you a clue. Uh, this is a coven clue uh, that you can add to the uh, the uh, the coven clue list. It is water moving in an unusual direction. And then you can ask me another question. Okay, sorry, I was just typing that in. No, it's uh, fine. And um, yeah, where is your lair? <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, where is your lair? Let me see if I can come up with. We see a pack of tarot cards, your pack of tarot cards, conceivably, falling through the air onto the table in front of you. And they all land face down, apart from the tower. So the tower tarot card is the other clue that you get. Oh, okay, let me type that in. And while you're typing that in, I will just check in with Chambers. Um, I think Chambers shop if the, did we get a 10 plus on that move? Cause, it's a, Cause the threat will then just depart. It right. will. Okay, all right. So maybe there's no need for it to show up here. Okay, okay. <laughs> Cause everyone's gonna be great. Okay. And then you're back in the room. Um, but Dr. Weiss, your hands are um, sore and, and they have a rash and it is weeping. And Rose, you are at that point of, of transformation. The mark of the beast is upon you and the mark of the husk is upon Dr. Weiss. Um, and Master Theodosius disappears into the crowd. And that brings our night to an end. Um, let's go round to Dawn. Collect rewards if a threat was resolved. None, we've got a question, so we've got a couple of threats, I think, that we could now resolve, actually. Um, answer the Dawn question. So let me go left to right again. So, so we'll come to you last, Darren, so you get an idea of how this works. We're at the Dawn question. Did the hunters answer a question? I think they did because uh, Chambers has certainly answered a question. So everyone ticks that first question. Did the hunters resolve a threat? Not in this cycle, I think. The last threat was the ghost, I think, and that was last cycle. So no, no ticks for that one. Rose, did you experience an echo in the night? I don't think so. I'd like you to think about candles. I mean, there could have been some of the ball, but we, we didn't really mention them, so no. No, I think I did, hmm. though. I put you in a library with flickering candles after you described candles oh, yeah, no, you're right, oddly yeah. in the presence of magic. So certainly, I think you experienced an echo in the night. Um, I think that probably um, also... Uh, well, let's go, to, let's go to Chambers first. Chambers, did you experience an echo in the night? This is why I was uh, explicit in re re changing that warehouse into a candle making factory. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, I'll give you that one. I experienced an echo in the night. Um, uh, let me go to Dr. Vice. Did you experience an echo in the night? E yes, indeed. That, that's weird. Did my camera just go off? Uh, yes, it did. How old? I'll sort that in a moment, but uh, yeah, the um, again, yeah, the the, the lighting the cigarette off the candle um, in the uh, 
that's fine with me. So, Darren, just again to explain what's going on here, if you can make a connection of even the most tenuous kind between something that that happened to your character and something that was described in that London at Night Tarot card reading, then you mark you did experience an echo in the night. So can you uh, can you think of anything? I think maybe, uh, gosh, I don't, I don't know. Um, the, uh, ex exploration of dark thoughts and, um, getting rid of, uh, beliefs that tether you. Absolutely. No, I go with that. I, I think loads of things cropped up there. We, we, uh, we had candles, we had tarot cards, we had what the tarot cards meant. Take your pick, Ephraim, tick that box. Um, let me go back across now to the specific questions. Um, Rose, did you encourage a fellow hunter to let loose for a change? Mm, no. Uh, did you use violence to solve a problem? Not yet. You really got to start thumping people, Rose. Um, uh, what about Chambers? Did you have a scene showing your secret private life in London? Yeah. In fact, that's all she's been doing. <laughs> indeed. Indeed. Um, Barrel Staves is the name. Chambers is my game. Um, did you ensure your employer got credit for your triumphs? No, because I'm not letting him in this world. <laughs> so um, it well. seems to me that, that that if you can find some somehow for doc for Dr. Vice to resolve a threat you have answered a question on, you'd be home free on that one. Yeah. We just um, need to get to the bits of the mask where I actually, we actually detail this relationship. I know. I, you know, you, you, you've thrown us back in time, Chambers. Um, uh, Dr. Vice, did you secretly engage in romantic or emotional behavior at odds with your aloof logical exterior? Um, yes, I think that um, uh, as, as grim as it may, the, the situation may have been, the um, affection that he showed... Um, um, uh, Annie Morris uh, probably counts for that. They, that right. was not a purely, uh, um, yeah. No, I think that's what absolutely like seeing, Yeah. And did you show physical affection towards the child while someone else was looking? Uh, no, I didn't this time. Uh, then let's go along to Ephraim. Did you counsel someone using your supernatural affinities on the basis uh, as the basis for that advice? Uh, no, I don't think so. Did you have a face-to-face -face encounter with a dark entity? Uh, yeah, I would say most definitely. Yes. I think there are probably several dark entities at, at play uh, in, in just a couple of scenes there, so mark that one. So for every one of those ticks, you now mark an XP. So uh, erase the two or three or whatever you've got and mark that number of XP in the XP track. When you fill the XP track, you get another move. Actually, there was a dandy that I ran up to and threatened about, you know, where are they? What do you know? Oh, you did. So, you did. Yeah, you so did. I kind of did that. Well remembered. It's not like there's nothing to remember in this game. I think we'll... <laughs> um, uh, and then, so that's the Dawn questions. Mark new elective Dawn questions. So you can swap some of those, those two choices of Dawn question in or out, your choice. So if you want to angle towards something else, uh, now is the time to do it. Never going to untick that private life uh, <laughs> question. I mean, that's a give. That's such a giver. The question that never stops giving. Not that I'm thinking about min-maxing a PBTA story game, but like having that in the informal smooth. It's, it's, it's too it's a easy. No -brainer. It's no brainer. Yeah. Um, and the fact totem is, and I think I quote appropriately from the rule book here, a capable individual. So, you know, you have to have things to show capability with. Um, uh, anybody else changed any or, you, or are you content with the ones you've got? I'm not seeing any change in roses. Um, have I seen a change for Dr. Vice? I didn't think so. Uh, I almost did, but then actually I decided I didn't get a chance to do the 
showing someone else the the child yet so i'm going to keep that one on the slate and i'm interested in going for the emotional one again i was tempted to switch back to guts because guts are also cool but uh yeah um and finally uh ephraim have you stuck with the same two uh let's see here looking at my sheet Oh, wait a minute. I think I'm confused. Tell me more. Okay. So do you see in the Dawn questions we've just run through, uh, two of them are your free choice. Three of them are set, but the two with the drop-down arrows, you can change every Dawn. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't getting that. Uh, so you, you can know... angle at something different in this cycle than you did last cycle, for instance. I mean, your face-to-face -face encounter with a dark entity, you know, it's kind of on demand, that one. You know, I think I'm going to keep them the same. Fine, fine. Um, uh, so we've dealt with that. Uh, I don't think we have any playbook or other moves that are hanging. Uh, and I don't think we have any Janus Mars prompts that are hanging. I'm going to suggest that that's a logical pace to pause before the next day phase. Uh, because I think, you know, we've got plenty going there. Um, I will point out to Dr. Weiss and Rose that both of those conditions will require a ritual intervention of some descript description to break the spell that the coven has placed on you. Um, in practical purposes, Rose, what I imagine that providing is a disadvantage when you try to resist the quickening, because you are half quickened. Um, and Dr. Weiss, I imagine that the damage that is done to your hands is going to act as a disadvantage specifically around all things medical that are involved in any kind of manual dexterity. Um, I, I will like, I'd, I'd like to do a quick stars and wishes, if that's okay, um, uh, just so I get a feel for next time. So uh, let's stick with character keeper order because I'm predictable. Um, Blake, any stars? Um, yeah, it's the star for um, Ephraim, the, um, the womb scene with the inhuman sort of female face. That was uh, a nice, although freaky <laughs> touch. Um, you know, Chambers, um, balls of steel going off to Whitechapel on her own. It's like, oh, this, oh, so, oh, this is going to go bad. But no, she was fine. It was the rest of us are in the shit. <laughs> yeah, never has Whitechapel been safer than a country house ball. The, the doctor with all these sort of nostalgic things, it's like that was their best life and everything's been a descent after that point. <laughs> yeah, I quite want to I, I quite want to see now uh, we accelerate Dr. Vice from that pinnacle to what's the next one? Time you had a terrible fight. Um, and then realize the person you lost weren't going to be together forever. Oh God, it's all downhill from now, Victor. Um, no, thanks for that. Thank you, Blake. Uh, moving along, uh, Leandro, any stars? Yeah, um, I want to give a start to yourself, Alan. Um, specifically, the uh, <laughs> the whole um, coven scene in Braithwaite Hall when all three of the other PCs were just kind of trapped there, and the the creepy voice um, warming into their you know into the core of their their stories just. Some, me some beautiful messed up stuff. Um, <laughs> Thank you for that. I'll take that one. Oh, also, small star for, for Barrel Staves. Definitely going to see him again, mainly because if I mess up this role, um, we might put him in jeopardy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, never never has anybody deserved to be dead more than Barrel Staves. Um, uh, great. Uh, David, any stars? Uh, yeah, no stars around. That was a good, a good fun, uh, a good fun session. Uh, yeah, it was. Um, um, uh, you know, not not that I wasn't expecting it, but it was. Yeah, great to see um, uh, Rose turning up at the um, uh, at the uh, at the ball in full uh, full cowboy finery. So uh, so that was that was a a, a lovely a lovely image um, to uh, uh, to go in on there. And yeah, and also the. Um, the detail of the of the candles um in that that first um um unseen bit was 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 really cool and uh, yeah obviously 
uh, gave gave a lot of uh, fuel for um, what followed. So that was that was really neat. Um, uh, yeah, um, uh, yeah, Leandra. Um, again, yeah, just um, the, the, I think more for the. Um, Obviously, the stuff that 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 chambers got up to um, was really cool, but I think the like the player decision to go no, nah, like chambers is totally focused on this. I'm just going to bam, go straight in for the find who they are, kill them, job done. Uh, was just such a nice a nice touch. Um, uh, it was really really cool to see to see that that come out. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, uh, to to that and um, and obviously seeing that that threat. Uh, uh, resolved, I would imagine, with some um, uh, urgency. Um, and yeah, uh, Darren, great to uh, great to play with you, um, and, and nice to meet you. Um, as, a, as a general thing, but um, no, it, it was. Um, I thought the um, you did a really good job of yeah, like um, getting up to pace quickly, um, uh, fitting in, checking out what people's um, um, you know tolerances and 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 interest and stuff like that were so i think just just in in, in terms of how you joined us it's really great it's, it's great to have you and looking forward to playing uh playing more sessions with you um and yeah again the the um uh the the the, the, the sort of whole bit with the um um the the uh, um like the the communing that they did in, in the sense was was really awesome um so yeah that was uh, that was cool um and yeah looking forward to seeing seeing more of uh mr parker next time uh, yeah and, and again Alan, yeah um some really nice again that i i really like that setup for the whole uh braithwaite orbit was was really awesome uh tatty was great fun to uh to interact with um and oh, um, <laughs> yeah no th thank you very much it was, it was great fun uh, yeah, my stars. Uh, yeah, Darren, thank you for for kind of uh, running to catch up. Uh, you know, because this is not a simple game to get your head around. And thank you too for asking for clarification when you needed it, um, because you know uh, I, I should have said at the start. Please ask for clarification if you need it. So I'm glad you did. Um, yeah, I, I I'm enjoying. Ro I, I you know, I'm sorry if I if it feels like I I forced the beast to the surface. But I want to see the beast do something. I want to see the beast do something. Well, um, it, it's a bit of a odd situation because we're supposed to be monster hunters, but I am a freaking monster. So it's like, how much do I live it out? You know? Well, you know, that's that's the joy of this. Go over the edge and you become a threat. <laughs> um, uh, Leandro, I, yeah, I continue to enjoy the, the Chamber's backstory. Uh, that's fantastic. Uh, Dr. Vice, I enjoyed playing opposite you as Tatty. Uh, it was a lovely scene, I thought. Um, and as I say, Darren, thank you for uh, you know bringing bringing it uh, very early in your time with us. Uh, any wishes? Let me go back to Blake. Wishes for next time? Um, more of Tatty. She reminded me of the Queen in Blackadder season two. She's just a <laughs> smiling, giggling psychopath. Just lovely. <laughs> oh, I've, I've more of Tatty, the giggling psychopath right I'll, I'll 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 aim to deliver um what about you leandro particular wishes for next time um i had two wishes that are contradictory to each other but i know what i'm gonna lean towards one is i kind of want to see um because i don't <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong but i don't think a single word was exchanged between the pcs <laughs> oh, <that's true. laughs> yeah. Yeah. um yeah, yeah. so I do want like a chance to be able to um, have that. And my other wish or possibility, which we don't have to engage with, is that I was raring, I, I was ready, not re not exactly raring, but I was ready for Chambers, just go in and confront the killer by yourself, prepared to spend everything in my personal quarters to, oh, wow. to kill that bastard. Wow. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, you know, uh, I don't think anybody would, would, would worry if you went off into Whitechapel in the night again. Um, so uh, kill the kill what's his name gregory dot 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 okay um uh what about you david uh yeah so um not not, not loads of specific wishes for me this time um which isn't a change from normal but um yeah i think um so actually t kind of touching on on that um on, on what leandra just said yeah i i'd be interested to see if maybe we can resolve two threats in one night 
because I think uh, I think we've got the uh, the wherewithal to do that. Um, and yeah, it would be cool. I mean, like if if you know, I'm I'm more than happy to to, to back up Chambers uh, in her uh, her quest of vengeance. But it would also be cool to just see Chambers just yeah wander off and take out a threat on her own. That would be cool. So yeah, yeah. I'd be up for that. Hey, Gregory, <laughs> make my day. <laughs> uh yeah uh darren any wishes for next time um darren did i ask you for stars i'm not sure i did oh no uh i i was just kind of uh i didn't know if that was some sort of sorry uh, no protocol. That's my fault. i didn't know no no, no. But... no that's just rudeness on my part so let me do stars and wishes together any stars um, yeah, no, I really appreciated all the explanation and walkthrough. Um, I tried to do my homework and read about the between. And I even asked a friend of mine about Brindlewood Bay mechanics. Um, and I was still just kind of spinning, you know. Um, oh, this is my second series. I'm still spinning. Oh, no. I mean, you seem like you've got it down. Um <laughs> uh yeah also just a comment uh as far as questions go um i'm very un-minnesotan in that uh i will say why is the emperor not wearing clothes so um yeah i'm a bit obtuse about that uh but uh yeah no i really appreciated the um role playing of uh characters um and uh special star at chambers i um I don't know. I just have a uh, special place in my heart for that kind of character. Um, like the support character who sort of runs in like the cavalry. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm really intrigued by the fiction. Uh, yeah. So there's that. And yeah, I just appreciate the welcoming nature of this group. Great. Glad you got the time. And any wishes for next time? Is there anything you want to see? Anything you want to do? Um, yeah, I got it. I mean, I normally have like 12 opinions on that, but I'm a little like, whoa, what just happened? Um, so, so yeah, I, I guess, uh, you know, the pacing and the, uh, fiction on the fly and stuff was great. Um, I do want to see some chickens come to roost, like, uh, you know, um, more details about the coven, uh, about, uh, Sally, no face, uh, et cetera. And um, maybe hear a little more about uh, Dr. Vice's uh, nefarious project. Oh, you know, he's, he's very open about sharing um, uh, the child. Uh, no, we'll try to do that. Um, so, uh, yeah, so what I'm imagining is, is, is I think we have two nights left until the coven's horrible scheme comes to fruition um and you have two threats that you could resolve next time uh one is obert fig and one is gregory the gregory so who knows um so uh so we'll try to do that but i'm going to stop the recording now uh